So and our next speaker is uh, Michael Rimler. And Michael is uh, going to talk to us about clinical reporting using R at GSK. Michael, take it away. Yep. Hi. Thank you very much. Uh, this will be a much less technical talk than the, than the last one. Uh, <clears throat> So hi, Rod. Thanks for joining. Yeah, my name is Michael Rimler. I am a programming leader in GSK Biostatistics. Um, one of my responsibilities is leading our effort for integrating R into the clinical reporting process. The use of R is becoming more pronounced here within biostatistics, spearheaded by folks like Andy Nichols and Christina Fillmore, who you may have heard speak earlier uh, in the conference. But my team's efforts are focused in the GXP world, thinking about outputs that support critical pipeline decisions or contribute to regulatory submissions. Think of things like conventional data sets, tables, listings, and figures. So that's why I'm here uh, to provide a whirlwind tour of our, our adoption strategy within clinical reporting, 18 months of work in less than 10 minutes. In order to do this, I've decided to run through the who, what, when, where, why, how, and next steps of our experience so far. Um, while we're not the only organization in the industry to be following a path to R, and indeed we are hearing from many others here at Our Pharma uh, that are addressing similar and related issues, uh, we do want to share our experience in hopes that it helps to push the entire industry further in this direction. So who? Uh, in the beginning, there were just three of us. I had recently joined GSK and was tasked with looking at our data science strategy within the department in particular the value uh, of R for clinical reporting. Our entry strategy was to use R for independent QC of displays for a number of reasons, but mostly because the risk to the business of using open source software for deliverables subject to regulatory scrutiny would be lower if used to validate outputs produced in SaaS, uh, but still provide the opportunity for our staff to learn and apply their learnings on the job instead of in addition to their job. We then started our first proof of feasibility project with a couple of very capable R programmers sitting in the department where we reproduced the summary data for nine tables from a clinical trial consistent with GSK reporting standards. And our next step was to perform a full-on proof of concept. We expanded the team of programmers and reproduced the data for 156 displays to support a steady CSR, primarily using Tidyverse and Base R as well as an internal package built on the Tidyverse uh, for specific functionality, such as producing summary statistics to GSK formatting standards. Survival and broom packages were used for the survival analyses, and we used the DFDF package for comparisons of data frames uh, uh, to production results. Along the way, we engaged with SDS, our statistical data sciences group, headed by Andy Nichols, <clears throat> which developed a number of R packages that facilitated consistency in the coding of those analyses. Following the very successful POC, the team expanded even further. Our adoption journey evolved past just R for QC and started laying out the roadmap for broader R integration. For that, we created a number of work streams, each individually led, but collectively delivering to our R adoption objectives. And then these efforts were designed to support our nearly 500 statisticians and programmers along their journey. We are early on in the uptake, uh, but the opportunity is open to all. So what was in scope? Well, here I have a very crude depiction of the clinical, conventional clinical reporting pipeline. <clears throat> we started with independent QC. We started with tables, figures, and listings. We started with standard summary statistics, means, medians, counts, percentages. And now we're moving into a POC for Atom data set generation and engaging our stats groups for inference and modeling analyses. When did we do this? Well, as I said, the, the, the proof of feasibility started early last year, the POC shortly followed. And at that point, we had enough evidence of capability that, um, that we had the confidence to open it up for live QC, but we still needed some architectural pieces to be put in place before giving the green light. Those included things like supporting documentation, uh, training and support strategy, existence of a qualified R environment, uh, and enhanced internal R packages uh, to, to help with the work. After a few months of this prep, around the middle of this year, we launched our pilot uh, where we allowed R to be used by anyone for independent QC of non-statistical TLFs. At the same time, we started our proof of concept for Adam data set generation and uh, umbrellaed up into the R adoption project, again, which is an integrated and coordinated effort with multiple work streams, which I'll go through in a little bit. 
This will carry us through 2021, where we hope to have a production environment to flip the script and begin using R on the production side. Where do we do our work? Uh, in a qualified R server, R Studio Server Pro instance uh, that we refer to as Warp, and it's kind of depicted here. I won't go through all of the details, but in Warp, we have access to our clinical data stores. As, uh, as well as an area, obviously, where we can develop and execute the code for QC. Um, but our warp environment also offers much more than that, including high performance computing capabilities and content sharing through RStudio Connect. Think of things like, again, our Shiny and our Markdown. So why are we doing this? From a clinical reporting perspective, we want our programmers uh, to have an expanded tool set so they can select the right tool for the job at hand and not just use a hammer for everything. R offers much more than just statistical analysis functionality. This will help to expand our delivery capabilities, whether it's through Shiny apps to deliver clinical insights or how we've leveraged our Markdown, Blogdown, and Bookdown to provide support documentation to staff. This also provides people with the opportunity to upskill, which can help from both a recruitment and retention perspective. And we wanna be recognized as progressive in this area and sit amongst the industry leaders in the space, not just follow along. We're looking to have our ready study teams and our package development team and a shiny development team. And of course, a robust support strategy, both in terms of provision of training and provision of supportive resources uh, for staff to reference. And of course, we always have our eye on using R for submission, uh, where the perceived risk of regulatory submission of analyses using open source software uh, has been mitigated. How are we doing this? Well, I've, I've already sort of mentioned that last year we had our R for QC proof of feasibility proof of concept uh, moving into our uh, uh, live QC in part three and our second POC for Adams this year. Those efforts have been absorbed by a broader R adoption project with six individually led and collectively delivered work streams covering things like the development uh, and release of central tools, a training and support strategy uh, for the staff, a deliberate effort towards managing the organizational change that will most certainly be disruptive to ind individuals along their journey, outreach to share our experience and learnings to help pull people in other areas of the business along as well as the industry as a whole. This also helps us to learn from others to improve our knowledge as we continue along our journey. And of course, keep, still keeping an eye on using R for production and R for submission. So what's next for us? I'm definitely looking at getting the pieces in place for using R to generate GXP compliant analyses, ensuring characteristics of the outputs such as data integrity, accuracy, reproducibility, and traceability. Further investigating our future deliverables beyond the conventional static data sets, tables, listings, and figures, and identifying where we can use R for supporting our activities through capabilities by packages such as R Markdown, Blogdown, and Bookdown. And finally, that pharma unicorn using R for submission. This is the ultimate goal, freely using R for submission, but while having the confidence that we can demonstrate what is needed to satisfy regulatory scrutiny over the elements of a submission data package, and perhaps even regardless of whether those elements are produced using SAS, R, or some other software, whether it's open source or not. Thank you very much for listening, and please feel free to reach out if you'd like to discuss anything further. Thank you, Michael, for sharing uh, the wonderful things uh, GSK is uh, doing to uh, promote use of R. Really interesting story how you are doing all the planning to move forward uh, to get where you guys want to be.